these crops are, are modified so that they can either tolerate herbicides or they are in, um, inserted genes from insecticides like Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a soil bacterium, which um, will kill a caterpillar if it is eaten. Now, the danger of crops with these insecticide genes in them is that you cannot wash off or neutralize the toxin and it is produced in every cell of the plant. In the US, there's not efficient ways to segregate GM and non-GM crops. And even if you do have ways to segregate them, sometimes a silo can get a mixed bag of GM and non-GM. And then it's, and if it's mislabeled, it can get into the system. We had a great example of this in New Zealand. On a couple of occasions, even this century, we've had consignments turned around from recipient countries because they detected GMO. GMO crops were supposed to be a new generation of crops. They weren't supposed to be able to contaminate anything. They were supposed to be seeds that would heal the future, would feed the future, would save the world. And what has now happened is GMO seeds are really controlling the seed supply in the crops that they have been engineered in, which is only about five or six crops, but they are the main staples. The questions we raised were, do we have an adequate framework for assessing the risks of double-stranded RNA molecules, not just for their intended target, but for other creatures in the environment, especially other creatures in the environment, but also as a human food issue. If they can pass to these environmental creatures, insects, through food, can they pass to us through food? If you look at what we consider our modern diseases uh, and take the CDC data like Dr. Nancy Swanson has done and plotted that data against the USDA data for glyphosate use and GMO crop uh, incorporation in the diet. You'll see a, a correlation coefficient that is close to 0.99 for many of those, 0.95. So it's almost as though it's the same thing. When you increase the glyphosate in your diet, you increase the probability of those diseases. I was during nine years part of these regulatory bodies, and I say during nine years, you should lengthen the tests on rats. I was requesting first three-month test. Then these people say, this is not normal, it costs too much. So I said, you cannot feed six billion people saying that you have not given this to rats. It's an obvious, silly mistake to always ask those with a vested interest in the outcome of the study to be doing the study.